I've played Zelda 2 more times than any other Zelda game. It's not just one of my favorite Zelda games in the series, but one of my favorite games on the NES. I even did a retrospective about it at Kotaku a few years back. So it's super cool that a game developer named Hoverbat did this amazing HD enhanced edition of the game. I wanted to give some of my initial impressions based on playing through all the way up to the harbor town of Maido. First off, this isn't just a simple HD upgrade. It expands the game in some really awesome ways. From the opening, it becomes clear there's so much more when you exit the North Castle, where the princess sleeps. Normally, you'd get sent to the overworld, but here there's a whole external area to the castle. And you can even find another part of the temple that's gated off by a series of breakable bricks. The choice to break up heart and magic containers into three pieces is brilliant because now there's all these new items you need to find to fully upgrade Link, tripling the amount of exploration that's required. As a quick example, there's a heart container right above the area where you learn the jump spell. This not only teaches you how to use the spell, but also gives you an indication to look out for new areas that the jump spell will unlock. Gameplay updates abound, like the new trophy sequence in Rudo Town. A Gorilla stole a trophy so you have to track it down to a cave. Whereas in the original, the cave was a simple area with just a few jumps over lava pits. The platforming is much more difficult this time, with disappearing platforms that kind of reminded me of Mega Man. The best part is that when you return the trophy, they actually display it in town. The first palace is now blocked off by mountains, but the moment you enter, you see something new. A heart container above the palace, which made me wonder how I was going to get it. I also loved how the usage of the candle has been modified. In the original, the moment you got the candle, any dark rooms were automatically lit up. In this new version, you actually have to light the torch in the room for it to light up. It's a small touch, but not only does it make the process more interactive, it adds a bit more of a gameplay element to the candle. The new area above the first palace has a bit of platforming that rewards players with that heart container that I've been curious about. Again, exploration is rewarded while also giving veterans of the game a new section to play. This all culminates in a fight with Horsehead, which plays out similar to the original. The second palace mixes things up, changing it so that you enter from the right and move left to the entrance. It makes the palace feel like an actual location with its own architecture and history instead of a palette swap variation of the earlier castle. Link's controls feel almost identical to the original, which is really nice. Say what you will about the original game, but very few got 2D sword fighting down as well as Zelda 2 did. For example, with the iron knuckles, if you jump and attack at the right moment, you can almost always get an attack in. I can't believe all these years later, I still instinctively have that attack down. The key item here is the handy glove which lets you break solid bricks. It acts primarily as a key to open up passages, as the second game in this series hasn't quite set up the game mechanic of having a dungeon's key item become the best way to fight a boss like the later games would. The second palace now also has swampish elements incorporated, which is a nice touch. You find a part of a magic container if you take the time to search for it. The path to the final boss also has parts of the swamp seeping into the temple, reminding players again that the temple is mired in swamplands. The final fight against the helmet head was a bit harder than I remember. I think there's now three heads instead of just two in addition to the character, but for someone like me who's played the original so many times, I like the new challenge. It's also great that if Link loses all his lives, the game continues at the beginning of the palace instead of back at the north castle. The town of Saria has updated the mirror quest so that you don't just find it in town. You have to go to the cemetery across the bridge and track it down next to Erdrich's grave, a nod to Dragon Quest. It makes you wonder what that lady was doing with a mirror in the middle of a cemetery. There's even a mini-game in Staria where you have to defeat a bunch of birds. This edition, while different from the original Zelda 2, does more to align the game within the series since mini-games are such an integral part of the Zelda Town DNA. Death Mountain is still really hard. The mountain has to live up to its reputation as the most dangerous section of the original Zelda. Considering the point at which it comes to the game, though, the relentless series of caves and enemies remains one of the most challenging parts of the original. 
but there's a few factors that ease the difficulty in this version. The fact that you can start at the town of Saria if you die is a big one, but there's also now a magic container piece and a heart piece along the way to boost players through the series of caves. It's still a matter of going right along each of the intersections, and the path to the hammer is a little bit harder than the original with some new platforming, but it still feels just as rewarding when you get it. The hammer itself acts as a big shortcut for the game since it allows you to break boulders that block several critical paths. In the harbor town of Maido, you get the quest to find the medicine for the sick young girl, which for the time was memorable for being one of the first side quests I can recall in an NES game. First, you have to track the flower down in the swamps, but when you take it back to the wise man, he tries to give you the fairy spell, but turns you into a cuckoo instead. I don't know what happens next since he vanished, but it's a nice twist on the original and kind of reminded me of Willow. Also playing as Cuckoo is kind of fun. Within Mido, you also get what is the best move in the game, the downward thrust. This basically lets you jump on top of most enemies by bouncing on their heads with your sword. I've talked about this before, but what made Zelda 2 so special was that back in the NES days, games with stories in towns full of NPCs were rare. Zelda 2 was not just expanding on the lore of the original, but giving it a dimensionality that the previous game's simple straightforward story lacked. I felt a genuine sense of awe loading it up. This enhanced version brings back that same sense of awe. With all new areas to go to, it really feels like a deeper dive into a world I thought I fully knew. I can't wait to go into the island palace next and find out all the changes. I've long wanted to do a video retrospective on Zelda 2, so this might motivate me to do a longer video, but right now I'm just having a great time revisiting Northern Hyrule in Zelda 2. Big thanks again to Hoverbat for this awesome release. I highly recommend it to anyone who's a Zelda 2 fan and wants to experience it anew.